Hey Floss Tube, it is Michelle from Made by Michelle McGraw, and this is Floss Tube number 47. It is February 23rd, 2021, and I am finally back to make a floss tube. Um, my generally cycle is two weeks, sometimes three weeks, um, if there's just a lot going on, and it's been a month. So <laughs> thank you for being patient with me. Um, thank you to all of the new people who um, subscribed. Thank you so much and welcome. Um, I always have the attitude that we're all friends here and um, the more the merrier. So thank you for joining me. Um, I was prepared to film in two weeks and we had kind of a family emergency. My husband ended up in the hospital with kidney stones. Not just kidney stones because he's had those before, but he had um, a kidney stone that was infected. So um, we were, I actually took him to the emergency room. Um, he had a hallway bed because that's a thing. Um, and they were actually going to release him. They did a CT scan and said, oh, you have a kidney stone. And he was like, this is more than a kidney stone. Like he's had kidney stones before. And he was like, this is, this is different. Um, they took his IV out and they were going to send him home. Um, and the nurse took his temperature and it was 103 and the urologist happened to be standing beside his hallway bed and said, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> so um, that turned into a couple days in the hospital um, and then he came home and then went back to the hospital the next week. He had a stent put in before he left the hospital and then went back to the hospital a week later to have the stone broken up um, and then come back home um, he actually feels, he went back to the doctor a couple days after that and had the stent taken out. Um, he feels better, but he has not passed stone pieces. Like I thought they would have passed by now. Although the doctor says it could take up to a week, he still hasn't passed anything yet. So, um, the, the, we call it, you know, every time he goes to the bathroom, we're like, have you had any rock babies yet? And, um, he will say, no, no rock babies. So, because he's supposed to be straining because they would like to collect him and found out, find out what is causing him to have kidney stones at this point. So, um, I mean, he's having the best care. The urologist is really, really good. But that did, for that week that he was kind of here and just waiting and trying to clear the infection because they didn't want to break it up until he cleared the infection, which means, of course, at antibiotics, um, he literally was taking pain meds around the clock because the stone was trapped. It wasn't coming out. Uh, yeah. So lots and lots of drama and, um, just getting him anything and everything he needed because he literally could go from the bed to his chair and from the chair to his bed. And that's it. So, um, I don't know. Men equate it to having, uh, to worse than giving birth. I don't know. I've never had kidney stones. Um, I have had three boys. Although, as my husband will jokingly say, but you didn't birth them, you had C-sections. And I'm like, what? It's okay. It's our little joke. He's like, I'm like, what? Um, that's worse, isn't it? I, I don't know. I don't have anything to compare it to. It's all I know. So, I, I don't know. Okay. So, that was a little life update. Um, so, it's just been crazy here. This morning, I was blow drying my hair and my blow dryer exploded. <laughs> so, it's been a crazy time. Um, my husband took it apart. Like I immediately like got it away from my hair. I mean, like, can you imagine? Right. And I got it away from my hair and he took it apart. It's an expensive blow dryer. Like it's a higher end one that you can get like an Ulta. Um, he took it apart and the fan had just basically shredded and went through the whole, the whole blow dryer. So, um, I'm in a market for a blow dryer sometime this week. I have a travel one of the same brand. Um, because I have long hair, it takes a while to dry it. So I really, I, I find a better blow dryer works better. So I have a travel one. I'm just using that until I can go to the store and get a new one. But, you know, one drama after another and nobody wants to burn up their hair. <laughs> so I was like, crazy, crazy. Um, okay, I have, let's get to the stitching stuff because that's what we're all here for, right? Um, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much to all my new subscribers. I've gotten a ton of new subscribers in the last month. Welcome. Um, thank you for joining me. Thank you for spending time with me. I feel like we're all friends here and the more the merrier. So thanks so much. If you don't subscribe, hit the subscribe button down there and, um, 
you know, be part of my stitchy friends part. So, okay, I have stitching to show. I also have a question that I got a lot from my last um, video was about dough bowls. And I brought all my dough bowls in here so I could show them to you. I got a lot of questions on what is a dough bowl? Where do I find a dough bowl? I will show you my dough bowls and I'll talk about them in a little bit. Um, so we won't go too far into it. Um, I'll show them. And then if you had any questions on that, that kind of gives you a visual. I have a lot of finishes. I have fully finished finishes and I have several whips. So I'm gonna jump into stitchy stuff because that's what we're here for, right? Okay, so I'm gonna show my first finish that actually um, I didn't get to show in my last video, but I finished it before um, Valentine's Day. I had shown this done, which is called, um, sorry, Love Cats from Britter Kitties. And I just finished it into a bigger pillow. And um, I put some trim around it. This is actually chenille yarn and it has a little bit of sparkle to it. I don't know if you could see that, maybe a little bit. Um, I got it in Hobby Lobby. Um, I would like to try Michael's. Um, I do think the stuff with sparkle in it is a little thin. I don't think it matters once it's on your pillow, but I can tell it's a little thin, thinner than say the Lady Dot Creates. Um, like I said, I'm not sure if it makes that much of a difference, I don't know if I would get the sparkle again. I think the other is nicer. I don't know. But if you couldn't find a color or you wanted a color, I think just chenille yarn could work. I don't know. Um, but anyhow, this is how I finished it. There is a 2021 charm there. And I finished it, backed it with some little, what I call Valentine's Day um, fabric. So that was left over from last week that I didn't show you, or I'm sorry, shouldn't throw this on the table. So sorry. Um, that was left over. I had showed that, but I actually got to finish it. So my next finish is I'm going to show you in one of my dough bowls. This is actually the display that I did. Um, so this is one of my dough bowls and I'll take them all out and show them to you individually. This was my St. Patty's Day display. I still have this um, up, but I actually put these pillows on my tiered stand that I have in my hallway. Um, so I had this on the table for a little bit because I had winter stuff on my tiered stand. I have moved this to my um, stand and I have another dough bowl down here that I have on my table. So um, let me show you these up close and then I'll show you the dough bowl. Okay, so the first one, let me... Let me get my card so I can tell you what it is and I can show you the pattern as well in case you're interested. Um, pattern is the next step. I had all the patterns here. Okay, here it is. Okay, this is called uh, St. Patrick's Day Lucky Hat from Country Rustic Primitives. And let me show you, they are on Etsy. So there is the pattern. And I will show you my finish on it. So I finished this, um, I think, don't think I used called for. I think I just used similar colors. I think there was only three colors in here. So there was the darker color and then two greens because there this leaf is actually a different color. And I think that's it. No, there's a little yellow down here, a little gold for his hat. So I stitched this on murky fabric, picture this plus murky, always my favorite. Um, I finished it adding a little bit of fabric that I got at the quilt shop in Atlanta when I was there. And I backed it with the same fabric, which I really liked. I didn't go crazy with my St. Patty's Day fabric, so I only have a couple pieces. But what I, this was the first time adding fabric to the front. Now, when I finished this, I was very pleased with this. Since then, I looked at it and I wish I had raised the fabric up a little bit more. 
So my bottom line should have been closer to my stitching versus leaving the gap, the same gap on the sides. It's not a big deal, but it's looking at it now that I've reflected on it for over a month, I wish I had done that and I will show you some finishes where I did do that and I'm more pleased with them. Um, and then I finished it with Lady Dot trim on the sides. They are filled with um, crushed walnut shells and I get mine from Lizard, I get Lizard Litter. Um, it's the same thing. You do have to look at the bag when you buy it to make sure it's all walnut shells. I saw online that there was a mix. I don't know what the mix is. I don't know what else is in it, but the one that I have is just walnut shells. So I like that for my dough bowl because they have quite a bit of heft to them, but they also, with the lizard litter, they stand up nicely versus fiber fill. Now I will say I don't, I will not use lizard litter for ornaments. It would be too heavy on the Christmas tree. So I would use fiber fill. So there you go, a little different. Okay, I did it again, I'm so sorry. Sorry. Okay, the next one is, uh, I don't think I have a separate card for this because it comes from the same book, same pattern. Okay, this one is from Little Shamrock's Pineberry Lane. And there's four patterns in this pattern. So I did two of them. I did this one and this one. So this pattern will actually go back in my stash um, because I might want to do those other two next year. Um, but here is my finish. Once again, I don't know that I used total 100% called for. I pulled threads. Um, I did add some ribbon which I just sewed on and I put a button down here. The button wasn't needed, but I liked it. So I sewed it on. The ribbon and the button are from my scrapbooking days. So I like being able to use some of those supplies. I just used a little bit of dotted green fabric and I used the same on the back. So there's that one. And the Sweet Clover Girl. And she's little, so now what I have noticed sometimes on my pillow, and it's the way that I sew my trim on. I get my corners because Vana tells me I need to get my corners popped out, and I do, just so you know. I pop my corners out really well. When I go to sew on my trim, because I sew it on, sometimes it makes my corners fold in a little bit, it doesn't bother me. It's also, I think, because I'm using the litter, the lizard litter, that there's nothing poking in that corner to keep it out totally. It doesn't bother me. It's not a big deal. And I think I just try to be very careful when I'm sewing my trim in the corners because sometimes it doesn't and sometimes it doesn't. I think it's probably the way I'm pulling when I sew it, but there it is. So, I sew it on. You could glue your, your, I know people glue trim on. I am messy with wet glue. Wet glue and me don't get along. So I tend to try to stay away from wet glue at all possible. Sewing is easier for me. So there she is. Let me get my fingers out of the way. Really cute, sweet little St. Patty's Day finish. And I backed it with some green fabric that I had in stash. So there you go. Those are my St. Patty's Day finishes. I've never had um, any St. Patrick's Day finishes before, so it was fun to do three. I thought three was enough for St. Patty's Day, and then next year I would add to it. So if you're new here, my goal this year was to do smalls for my dough bowl and my tiered stand that I have. Um, I, I want to work on my bigger projects too, but those are not pushing me like these minis are. This year is my bulk to get at least three to five for every season done. That's been my goal. I've met that goal for um, winter, Valentine's Day, and now St. Patty's Day. I did three, I was done, I moved on, and I started with spring and Easter. Um, I, I've already met my spring and Easter goal, although I'm still stitching and I'll show you those that I have. Um, I will stop 
stitching spring and Easter, March 1st. Then I'm going to move on to bees and Americana. Um, I have so much that I want to do in that. I really want to get started. I also have a lot of um, Christmas ornaments that I want to stitch, which I know I will be stitching Christmas in July. Um, I'm trying to think if I will stitch Christmas in June and July. I don't know. I'm just going to see where I'm at, but I'm cutting myself off for spring, March 1st. So there you go. Um, I'm going to show you this quick. I did not stitch this. I did not finish this, but this is something that hangs. Oops, wait a minute. Good gracious. I have a needle and then a project came with it. Apparently the needle stabbed this. Okay. So since this is St. Patty's Day, I wanted to show you this wall hanging. I actually got this in my LNS. So my LNS will often sell models that are um, out of print or ones that she's not going to carry in the store anymore. And sometimes I can get them for less than I would getting the materials, getting the pattern, stitching it and finishing it myself. Not all the time, but I have found a couple of them. This one was just adorable. I think this is a Bent Creek. Like I said, I did not, this on a little um, wall hanging. I think it's beautiful. I love it. Um, I did not stitch this myself though. So just so you know, um, but that was a find in my local LNS and I love being able to give a home to some of those pieces because they're absolutely beautiful. Okay, sorry, had to grab a drink. I promised you a look at this dough bowl. So this is one of four dough bowls I'm gonna show you in this video. This one is a little different because it's white. Dough bowls can be any color. Um, and obviously if you got a wood one and you wanted to paint it, you obviously could. Um, this one I found in an antique store, I guess you would call it. It's a store, it's a large store, but there's multiple booths. The best place I have found for, to tell you where to go to look for dough bowls is actually Etsy. So look under dough bowls and a bunch of them will pop up. Now I'm pretty frugal on my dough bowls. I'm not, I don't really care that they're authentic dough bowls. Some dough bowls are antique and were used back in the day. I think for dough, for making dough and storing dough, that's the best I can research. I'm not all that concerned that they're actually authentic antique dough bowls. I go for the look because I'm using for decorating. So I don't know. Um, prices vary. I think for this one, I want to say I spent 20 to $30. And I don't exactly remember, but somewhere in there. So that's, it. I like this one, as you saw earlier, I, I could fit three or four small ones in there. So it's a nice piece. I always have a dough bowl on my kitchen table with some sort of display in it. Okay. Since we're talking about dough bowls and my next finishes will, ha will be in a dough bowl and I'll show you that. Let me show you the empty ones that I have. This is another dough bowl. It's tiny. So cute. Let me get one of my finishes here. So maybe I only had, whoops, it's upside down. Maybe I only had one finish. But how cute is that? Adorable. I picked this up. I haven't used it in a display yet, but I think it's so cute. This actually could fit on my uh, tiered stand. So I liked it just to kind of put littles in and stuff. I thought it was adorable. I don't remember how much I paid for this one. Um, that was kind of just a quick find when I was in that store. I got it the same time I got the white one. Okay, this one I have had for years and it's more of an oval shape or a long oval, I guess. Rectangle maybe. Um, I've had it for years. I think I bought it at a Christmas show, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, there is no tag, so I don't know how much I paid for it. If I had to guess, somewhere between 50 or $60, probably. Um, but I don't remember. So that one I use, I like that you kind of get a different look. My Valentine's Day stuff was displayed in this one. 
I will actually post pictures on Instagram over the next couple days and you'll see all of my Valentine's Day ones in this one. Okay, let me just set those out of the way. My final dough bowl, hold on, let me grab it. Oh, this one's heavy, because it's full. So this is my biggest dough bowl that I have. And this one is what I have on my kitchen table and I will show you all this in just a little bit. But as you can see, it's a larger dough bowl and I could still fit lots of stuff in here. So I will empty the stuff that's in here and then I will show you the actual dough bowl without anything in it. Um, all right, so the first one that I wanna show is a finish from last year that I finished, fully finished. And this was a free pattern from Kelly. Oh, it's not so, is it so Kelly? Kelly, I can see the name and I can't remember it. Hmm. Okay, if I can find you, I will link it to the bottom. Remember, I upload these at home, so I don't have a computer. I'm just on my iPad at home. Um, I will try to put the stuff in there. Is it Kelly Sedota? No, that's not right. I'm sorry, I can't remember. I will try to put it down in the comments. If it's not there and you want to know where you haven't seen this free pattern, send me a message or leave me a message and I will definitely um, try to direct you to the free pattern. This was out last year. She has a new one out this year. She actually put it out for Valentine's Day, but I just love this little bunny. I think he could be out for Valentine's Day and Easter. So I love patterns that go for two seasons. So if you do one pattern, you can leave them up all the way through. I finished them with a little bit of ribbon. This is actually from my scrapbooking supplies, a little bit of fabric, which I backed the same fabric in the back. And then some lady dot trim. And I just used a scrap. I don't know the color on that one. That is picture this plus, I just don't know the color. Um, okay, this one is hands on designs, more chocolate bunnies. Now. I started this whip a while ago and I was just dragging and dragging and I, I didn't think I was gonna finish it. And I decided I was not going to finish it. But then I, then I saw somebody who had moved the words or changed the words and it might be Helen D, I'm not sure. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's brilliant. Because I, I love the little bunnies, I love the little carrots, I just don't like doing block lettering, and that's totally me. Um, I like it when it's done, I just don't like stitching it, if that makes sense. So I, I just, I find it very boring, and I was dragging and not going to this one. So I brought the carrots up, finished them underneath the bunnies, and I had a finish, and I loved it. This is Picture This Plus, it is a 16 count. Um, I finished it with some fabric I had in my stash and a little, um, some ribbon that I sewed on. And then the back fabric is different with just some bunnies from my stash. So that is more chocolate bunnies. And I didn't do the whole pattern, but I think it's just as cute. So I really, really like it. I think I gave that pattern to Erin. I think. I'm not 100% sure. I think I did. Um to pass on the stash so all right the next one is and I've gotten a lot of comments on this one so let me find out what I used here okay he is risen from country rustic primitives let me show you so I changed the colors um, you could do any colors you wanted and I stitched this on 14 count murky. I changed the brown is 640 and the purple is 3041, all DMC. I liked purple um, Katie from Katie Stitching, if she's on YouTube and has a floss tube, so go check her out. She and I were talking and she said, you know, purple is such a Lent color, an Easter color. And I was like, that's a perfect idea. That's what I'm doing. So, um, Katie inspired me to change the color. I finished it with a lady dot trim and I backed it with this kind of chalky, purpley green. It just screams spring to me, so I liked that. So I love that one. That's, that is one of my favorite ones that I've done. 
Um, this one I'll just show you. It is a set of four. It's a prairie schooler. And it normally hangs on my cross stitch board, but because my boards are full, I had this extra Easter pattern. I just stuck it in the frame that I changed out and I stuck it in my dough bowl so that I could see it. Um, I don't remember what name this is because I've done it years and years ago. Um, it is a Prairie Schooler one though. I will, I have taken pictures of my cross stitch boards and I will put those on Instagram. If you want to follow me on Instagram or see any of these pictures up close, it is made by Michelle McGraw. Simple, simple. Okay, the next one, this one was a cross stitch that I rescued from a consignment store up near Raleigh. When I go to um, visit my girlfriends in Raleigh, Cary area, um, me and my girlfriend sometimes go to, I think it's called the Scrap Exchange, and it's, it's all... I would say it is 50% treasures, 50% crap. But it's all stuff that you would use like claw, um, like uh, fabric, cross stitching supplies, knitting supplies, scrapbooking supplies, um, upholstering supplies, frames, um, stuff that you could just use in the craft world. Um, some of it is like a whole barrel of bottle caps. I don't know what you do with a whole barrel of bottle caps, but I think like schools and stuff come in and will get that and then they create stuff with it. Um, there'll be framed pictures and maybe you don't like what's in the, in the frame, but the frames are gorgeous or you could use them and repaint them. It's a great little place. Um, I found this little piece in, it was finished into a little mini bag. I think it was 50 cents something like that. And the bag what had like, it, it was like a little bag that they had finished and it had a um, fringe top. It was cute, but the bag was stained. Um, I don't really know what you would have done with the bag. So I took it and my goal always was to cut it down and finish it. And so that's what I did. I cut it down. I added a ribbon trim because I have a lot of ribbon and I added the fabric to make it a little bigger and I backed it with the same fabric in the back. And if anybody is a Lawn Fawn fan, they make um, like stamps for crafting. This reminds me of Lawn Fawn paper, which I love. I, I don't know, that fabric just reminds me of Lawn Fawn. I don't think it is. I don't know what fabric it is, but it reminds me of their paper every time I see it. So that little guy has been rescued and the good thing about when I add fabric, when I put them in a dough bowl, I want different shapes and different heights so everything isn't the same. But the great thing about it is I can stick a little piece in front of this and I still see the stitching because that fabric down there doesn't really matter, but it gives it a little bit of bulk. So I really like that. So that was my rescue piece. Okay, my next piece that I finished is Spring Delivery. Let me remove this stuff out of this dough bowl so I can get this stuff and show you. Um, I'll just show you what I have in here. So this is like a little spring twig. My sister got me that for Christmas. Here are some wooden eggs that are carved that I found at Hobby Lobby. I thought they were really cute. I just bought three of them. And then I have this little sign. I think I showed you some of these before. My sister bought me a bunch of these for Christmas. A lady made them. One side says bunny and one side says he is risen. So I really, really love these little signs. Um, I don't know how much she paid for them, but she bought me like a big box of all different seasonal ones. And I just adore them. I, I love them. Okay, let me show you this dough bowl. Get it out of the way. There you go. Okay. Sorry. All right, so now we go to spring gathering from scattered seeds samplers. And here is the pattern. Uh, there we go. And I love him. I will tell you I made a very noticeable change. So I love his pipe. I think he looks fancy with his pipe. But I'm not a component. I'm not... Um, Smoking isn't great, but, 
but a bubble pipe is still fancy and it's okay because it's just a bubble pipe. So I made mine into bubbles. So I, you could leave the, the pipe off, but I really, really liked the pipe. Um, but I just made it into bubbles. My kids are old enough to where they don't smoke and nobody in our family smokes. Um, I get it. I, well, nobody in my immediately family smokes. My grandmother smoked. My uncle smoked at different times. Um, it, it's not, I think my dad smoked when my mom first met him. Um, she made him quit. <laughs> it's a big joke. So, um, I get it. It's an addiction. Um, I just didn't want, like my kids are old enough. Um, my youngest is 14. So like he, he gets it. He, he understands it. He doesn't like the smell of smoke either. Um, but you know, one day I would have grandkids and I just thought a bubble pipe. It serves it by all means. It's cute either way. I've seen people leave it off, but I really like the pipe. So I finished him on 14 count picture this plus I believe it's to bloom I'm not a hundred percent sure but I believe it is um and I changed parchment to 3865 parchment was right here and I think there's another spot where parchment is oh his tail my parchment was very yellowy and it did not it didn't show up so I changed it to 3865 um, I just think he's adorable. I love, this was, this is my favorite finish. Look at those little chicks, his little key, just the little motifs. I, I just love him. I fin I did not put trim on him because I loved him so much. Like I just, I thought he was great. I didn't put any trim. I did finish him with just some backing that I thought matched him well. I just thought the muted colors were so pretty. Um, there is a companion piece. I don't remember what it's called. Um, I, I have not done it. It will be done next year, I believe. Um, nothing like throwing stuff all around, right? Okay, so that is, no, that is not all my finished pieces. I am lying to you. Those are all my fully finished. So now let's get into, I don't know why I have multiple stacks. Okay, let me just make sure, yeah, all right. So now let me get into my finishes that are not fully finished yet. All right, my biggest one is, and, and you haven't seen pictures of this yet because I haven't posted on Instagram, but I will, is Feliz Navidad from Blackbird Designs. And let me tell you, I loved this. This was gorgeous, and what got me was the colors that are chosen. So let me just read to you the colors. It's all um, weeks. It's baked apple, bullfrog, chickpea, confederate gray, cranberry ice, gold, crisp bonbon, olive, pecan, putty, putty, stepping stone, teal frost, and parchment. Those colors are stunning when you see them in person together, and I was like, I have to stitch this. So I did. So, can you see all that? I have it on um, a pants hanger. I don't use pants hangers um, in my closet like this, but they are great to hang up cross stitch. I use a hoop. I did iron it, but I had folded it. And look, you can see a crease when you fold it. So I ironed it just a little bit, but obviously it would get more of a pressing before I frame it. But... This is fantastic. The colors, and I don't even think the colors are popping as much as they do in person. It, they are literally beautiful. So here are my initials. I replaced those and put my initials in there. And then 2021 down here. It's, it's fantastic. Now I stitched this on, where did I put that card? Uh, 18 count be stitch me toast. So that is not the called for. Um, I think it looks beautiful with it. I did not do down here. Two of these are supposed to be larger, two of the berries, and they're supposed to have a different stitch in them. I didn't like that. I thought it looked 
odd that only two would be that way. So I didn't do that. I just stitched them normal. And then there are some specialty stitches that are Smyrna and eyelet stitches. So I think mine are, um, I think mine are Smyrna. I don't think they're eyelet. So, but they're in the same area. So like you can see them, hold on, let me bring this to you. Um, in the heart, wait a minute. Oh, there you go. In the heart are those specialty stitches. So this is definitely one. Um, I think this, no, not that heart, hold on. Right here is another specialty one. The purple is specialty stitches is the eye or the Smyrna stitches. Um, you can definitely do this one on Ada. You won't, I don't, I didn't know how to do the other one. I, maybe it would have been bigger. I don't know. It, it worked for what I did and it kept it in the same where it was supposed to be. So that's what I did. Um, but I really, really like that. Oh, there's a piece of paper on there. There, now you can see it without the piece of paper. Love this. Beautiful. There are three more to the series so far, isn't there? I don't know how many there's going to be. I have two of the other ones. Um, one is Merry Christmas and one is, it's more muted, like log cabin-y looking. That doesn't really tell you anything, but look under Blackbird. It's Christmas Sampler series. And this was number two in it. So that was... A finish. Uh, okay, this is part of a whip too. So I will show, it's a finish, but it also has a whip attached to it. So I'll show that in a minute. Um, okay, the next one, Seasons in Chalk. So this is Seasons in Chalk Spring, and this was in Just Cross Stitch. Hold on. April 2016 edition from Hands On Design with Priscilla Bain, their collaboration, and there is the spring, the bunny. Now, I chose not to do the spring because I have spring in another pattern from Stitching with the Housewives, and it's a little smaller with flowers around it that I wanna do sometime. So I didn't do the spring. So I just did the bunny because Look how cute he is. Just did the bunny. So let me show you the bunny. Isn't he adorable? I love him. Adorable, adorable, adorable. He, this is fabric from Fiber on the Whim. It is a 14 count. I don't know what it's called, but it's just like a chalkboardy-ish fabric. Um, I picked my own colors. So I used Color and Cotton Pickles for the green, Be Stitch Me Silk Tulip for the pink. Chalk, I did use chalk and butternut squash that were called for. So he needs to be finished up. Okay, the next one that I finished is uh, Brenda Gervais. I don't know if this is a with thy needle and thread. I always get confused because it's not on the front of the pattern. So I don't know if she has some that are with thy needle and thread and some that are just her, but it's Brenda Gervais, Easter Peep Patrol. Mm, I'm getting a lot of glare, there we go. Now, I picked colors for this. Um, I changed some colors, um, just two colors, so they showed up better. Um, Okay, so this is mine. I did it on 18 count muddy puddle from Be Stitch Me. And I will tell you, this is very hard to photograph. It doesn't photograph well, but it does show up in person really well. So like the little flowers up above them don't show up really good when I zoom out, but then the other colors show up really good. So just really cute. I'm gonna finish that into a little mini pillow for my dough bowl. And once again, this is Be Stitch Me 18 Count Muddy Puddle. 
I actually think Muddy Puddle is a good substitute for those that cannot find Picture This Plus Murky. This is a little lighter. This is a little more taupey than um, Picture This Plus Murky. Let me, here. So this is Picture This Plus Murky. Of course, it depends on where, what cut you're using. Sometimes my Murky has this tannish in it and sometimes it doesn't. So I think while it's not an exact match, I think it's a good substitute when you want kind of that grungy look without, and you can't find Murky. That's my opinion. I don't know. And this is Ada, so maybe it, it, um, I know it dyes lighter in the Lugana because I have it in Lugana. It's slightly lighter, but I think the Ada is a good substitute. So that is Easter Peep Parade. As I told you, I've been busy. I've been stitching, stitching, stitching. Okay, this one, um, I have it in a, no, right? I think it's right here. Hold on. Okay, so this one is out of Blackbird Designs Sewing Club. I like everything in this book. I want to stitch everything in this book. I started with a small because I loved the summer. Um, I loved this flower. So there it is in the book, and it is called Summer Flocks. Um, I did it with my initials, which I actually think looks like mom, <laughs> because I think the top of the flower says mom. Um, I added the date, the year, but I love this, and I'm gonna finish this into a little pillow for my dough bowl. I think it's just very springish. There's another one in here I wanna do for spring. I just haven't done it yet. I think that one is cute, the pear, for my dough bowl as well. And even if you didn't want to do this top vine or this bottom vine, it's still very, very pretty. So there's so much in this book. Um, so I have that kitted up. I've had it kitted up for a while. And I was like, you know what? It just needs to be worked on. I need to do it. Okay. One last finish. And let me try to find the bag that... No, I have another work in progress too. Hold on. Okay. So this is kind of my spring prairie schooler bag. So I will leave this in here because I'm not going to get it all finished this year. But I did do prairie schooler birds. Um, and I started with the robin. Now I really like um, this one. And I really like the hummingbird. I like them all, but those are, I like these little finches. I think they're so cute. I think they're finches. I don't I'm not really a bird connoisseur, but let's call them finches, okay? We're, just humor me if they're not. If they're not, you can tell me what they are. <laughs> Until then, I'm going to call them finches. So, all right. So, here we go. There is my finish for my spring. And this was stitched on Picture This Plus Alchemy, 14 count. So, it stitched up very nicely. I used the call for... Prairie Schooler can do no wrong in my book, and, and they really, really are pretty. This could be a very easy one if you wanted to use some variegated floss to use it on the green part, the, the leaves. It would be very, very pretty. But it's very pretty without it. Um, so I have more in here that I want to do. Um, I have Birdsong 2 that I would like to do some of those for my spring dough bowl. I don't know that I'm going to get it done this year. Hold on, there's another book. Yeah, here we go. I don't know that I'll get it done this year, but it's going to stay in this bag until I do. Um, Birdsong 1 as well. Now, I have started Birdsong 1, and I want to do the verse up here all the way down to there. At the house, I'm going to leave off. So it says, a bird does not sing because it has an answer. It sings because it has a song. And I just think that that was such a cute little phrase and sentiment. So I started it on. I'm using the same Alchemy Picture This Plus. This time I am adding um, variegated floss. So the green is actually variegated. I don't know that it's picking it up. 
Um, and I have variegated for the um, red. It actually has like a cardinal down here and I wanted him to be very, very red. So I'm changing this one a little bit, but it'll be the verse. It's a little easy stitch, so it shouldn't be too, too big and he'll be part of my spring decor. Once again, I don't know if I'm gonna finish him this year, but they will remain in this bag until I get them all finished that I wanna do. Okay, those are all my finishes and whatnots. Let me show you some other whips that I've done. So I don't even know if I should show this because it's not that exciting, but I will show you progress. Um, I did work like a day on Winter Rose Manor. We've all seen this, we all love it, it's beautiful. And let's see, I am stitching mine on 18 count Picture This Plus Legacy. I'm using one strand and I did a middle start so that I could get on that house because I changed mine. Um, so as you can see, I'm kind of in the middle of the fabric there. Not much progress, but I've started up here on the white because I really wanted to make sure that that shows up. And I'm trying to see where my colors are. So I changed roasted marshmallow to B5200 because I needed it to show up on my fabric. Um, and I'm trying to see the pink that I used for the house, because I definitely changed the house so far. The pink that I'm using is Cameo Pink from Gentle Arts. Um, I wanted it to look very pink, like the like the front of the pattern. So that's what I did. And I don't even think it's, it's showing up very white there, but my conch, as I said before, was very tan. It didn't look anything pink, so I changed it. Stitch it how you like it. Okay. All right, here. We're getting through the piles. All right. The next one that I've been working on is carrot seeds from Stitching with the Housewives. So there's what it looks like. Very, very cute. Let me show you my progress. Let me put a piece of paper behind it. This is the one that the needle stabbed the bag and came out. There's my progress. I have a very, um, I have an idea for finishing this. So I wanna stitch that, make sure my finishing idea works before I stitch the next seed pack. But I would like to stitch all of the seed packs if my idea works. If my idea does not work, it'll end up being one pillow and I won't stitch the other ones. We shall see. Um, okay. I don't have this card out here, but I did grab very quickly a project that I had when my husband went into the hospital just to grab it out. I put a couple stitches in it, Christmas Magic from Heart and Hand. This is one that I had like three stitches in and it's part of my 2020 whips and I really just need to get it done. It won't take much. So I did put a couple more stitches in, but not many. It'll get done, if not um, in July. It will get done, Christmas in July. Um, also, I am up to 17 finishes for the year. So that's kind of exciting, but they are smalls. I am stitching a lot of smalls this year. All right, this one is Country Rustic Primitives. I am so sorry about the wadded up piece of paper that I'm calling my chart. And here's where I'm at. I will probably finish this one Friday at work. I just have a little bit more to go. He'll get done. So he's in my to-go bag. I don't have much to do. He's an easy stitch. I'll finish him up. He will be finished. Okay, so my last whip that I have, and then I will do my giveaway. All right, so my last whip is my Lent piece that I started for Lent. I got to start for just that day. I'm going to go back to it 
probably Friday evening um, or maybe tomorrow. Wednesdays and Fridays are kind of my goal. Um, this isn't that much, but I kind of wanted it to be my piece that I took my time and worked on throughout Lent. So I'm in no hurry to finish it. I am stitching this for Lent, but also for my dad. This was his favorite church hymn ever. Um, with Amazing Grace, and it is from Heartstring Samperly, the Sunday Stitches. There are a few shops that carry these. Um, I ordered mine from one shop. I got this pattern. The second pattern has been released, and my shop has not even invoiced me for the second pattern yet. So, I found the second pattern from a seller on Etsy, and I ordered it. So, there you go. At least I'll get it, right? Um, okay, so this is my start. Now I'm doing a little something different. I am stitching it on 14 count murky. Um, and I am doing it as a red sampler. I am hoping to do all of them in different reds because one, I love the hem idea, but two, I love red samplers. So I am choosing to do it in all red. And this is my favorite red, which is the Belle Soir tulip and it's just beautiful it is a silk I don't think you can see the variegation very well but you can see it stitched it's just beautiful now the next one I will tell you is going to be a little trickier to do as a red sampler because it has a flower that has dark and light in it and the flower you have to put those dark and light in there the way that I see it so far. Now, I don't have the pattern in hand, but I think I need to have the dark and light for the flower to really show or it would just be a blob. So what I'm thinking about is I will pick a pink or a darker color. I will pick two reds somewhat to get that flower shape in there, still letting it be a uh, red work. All right, so those are my whips. Let me do my giveaway right fast. Okay, my winter, my giveaway was Winter Quaker from last time, and I am so sorry for making you guys wait. I had 108 comments that said the keyword winter, and I do the ran, random generator, and Carol Brown won. So Carol, email me at madebymichellemcgraw at gmail.com, okay? And then send me your, um, if you have a, different name, um, mailing a name. I think Carol Brown is your name, but you know, I, I don't know. Um, and then your address and just say winter Quaker in there so that I know. I always like to double check. I'm so worried that I'm going to send the wrong winner to the wrong. So I like to double check. All right. That brings us to my giveaway for this week. And I am stitching Easter and spring. So if you want to get a start, here is Barbara Anner. I'm sorry, Barbara Anna Designs, and it is called Hoppy Easter. So if you would like Hoppy Easter, put Easter in your comment. And I will tell you, this looks like it's a paper copy because it's very thin, but it is sealed. I got it from Creative Poppies. It is an original chart. So just that's how they come when you buy them from them. I'm pretty sure you can get this as a PDF from them as well, but I actually bought the physical copy I've had it for years, um, and I'd like to pass that on to you. It is brand new, unused. Okay, so put Easter in your comment. Okay, so I have a little bit of stash, and I'm gonna show that quickly, and then we're gonna move out of here. There are two companies that I want to um, show you today. One is Wicked Stepmother, and they are on Etsy. And I ordered some variegated floss from Wicked Stepmother. And let me tell you how fast these shipped. I don't know where she ships from. Where is her? It doesn't say. I ordered them like Sunday. Today is Tuesday. And I'm not even kidding. This was so fast. And that's what the post office is screwing around right now. So they are amazing. Um, I've got Help Me Rhonda, which is just a really pretty green. And look at their floss tags. Are they not so cute? Um, 
I just wanted to try their floss. I see, I saw it on Nisi Lin and I wanted to give it a shot. And I'm going to go ahead and say, so far, I'm very pleased. These are 8.5 yards um, skeins. This is Harvest Moon. Now you have to check back because she only has certain colors at certain times. And so you got to get what's in stock. So that's what I did. I just ordered what was in stock. I ordered two if I could so that I had enough to try a good bit. Um, I put these in on my, with my floss. And when I do substitutions, it's these brands that I pull from in a pattern. This is Love Letters. This is Baby Blue. Very pretty. Um, this is Little Red Riding Hood, and I love a good red. Very pretty. And then this is Bread and Butter. So I can tell you, I actually will be buying more because I think this is a fantastic deal. I love the colors. So, and I bought those, they were not gifted to me. So that review is 100%. I bought them because I loved them. Loved the colors and I'm they're very, very nice. Okay, the next Etsy place that I bought from is Pumpkin Creek Primitives. And I know Pumpkin Creek Primitives has a floss tube. Sorry. Because my sister has ordered from them and watched their floss tube. So I placed an order. First of all, she had some needle minders that I had to get. And these needle minders are from Rebel Stitcher. So I have had some of her needle minders before and I love them. I got them directly from her, I think. But these were in the shop um, at Pumpkin Creek Primitives. I ordered them with my order. I think you could get them either way. Um, but that is Fiona. So if you don't know, Fiona was a baby hippo that was born at Cincinnati Zoo and she was incredibly small as a hippo. She was born very premature and the zoo stepped in, sorry, I have an itch. The zoo stepped in to save her life. And Fiona is full of character and I have just enjoyed watching all the videos of Fiona growing up. And she is a big hippo now, so that is amazing. And she's back with her mother now. Um, and so I think they call that a, do they call it a pod? No, they call it something else. It'll come to me after this video. So unfortunately, she was reunited with her father, but then her father was euthanized shortly after because he came, became very ill. Um, but Fiona, she's a ham. She is a ham. And I, I, I love hippos. I really do. Like I, if there's hippos on the TV and I'm watching the TV, I will stop every single time and watch a hippo show. I don't know why. I just think they're fascinating. And then um, I got another one of the Bigfoot needle minders because she had them in stock that says, believe in yourself. I already have one, but I needed another one. So I bought both of those and they're nice needle minders. So that is Pumpkin Creek Primitives. Is it focusing? I don't know. They are on Etsy. And they are on Instagram as Pumpkin Creek Primitives as well. And they have a YouTube. So check them out. I think I've seen a couple of her YouTubes. Okay. I got some fabric from there. And so I'm going to quickly go through this. Um, I'm not going to take it out of the bag because there's so many. But this one is 16 count Zygor. I don't. This is x Designs fabric. Um. I don't know the name on this one. Actually, I don't know the names on any of them. And I didn't bring my receipt in here. So this one is like a very dark, um, it reminds me of oatmeal, but like dirty oatmeal, but darker than that. But it's very pretty, 18 count. Here's another 18 count and it's purpley with splotches. I think that would be great for some Halloween pieces. Here's some blue with some splotches. So pretty. I had to give these a try. That one is 18 count as well. Here is some yellow. So pretty. I actually think this would be gorgeous for Easter pieces. Had I had this, I might have stitched, stitched the peep parade on this. This I really like. 
Um, and here's like a cream one with, with blotches on it. This is a 16 count Ada. Beautiful. What I have found out that I like to stitch for my dough bowl, I really like to stitch on kind of this weird funky Ada because I don't know that I would frame this funky Ada on my wall. Maybe this one I might would, but I really like to do these smalls on them on Ada because they're quick, they're easy, they're fast. I fill up my dough bowls and I love it. My sister actually turned me on to this fabric, so it's all her fault. Another purpley one with splotches. This one is fantastic and I need to find out the name. Let me take this one out of the package. Um, if I can find the little thing here. Okay, this one I think is just divine. Let me take the string off. Yeah, oh, wait a minute. It says it on the back of the string string so early Halloween I'm not taking all those off just so you know because I will never ever figure out which one wouldn't fit which when I'm done I love it love it is that not beautiful I love it I I like anything grungy if you haven't noticed so to me th this is fantastic this is an 18 count you can kind of see it's a creamy Love that. And then I got 18 count fabric flare chalkboard. I actually don't know that the chalkboard is overly chalky for me. It's more of a gray. So anybody who doesn't like to work on black, black chalkboard, fabric flare is a good, um, I would say it's a good substitution for that. Everybody's always looking for something other than black for people that don't like to work on black. I think fabric flare is a good one. So, okay. Then I bought some flosses that she, whoops, it's caught in my, flosses that she had, and she put them on a beautiful, um, I don't know what you call those. It's not needle minder thread, thread drop. Beautiful decorative thread drop. It was so nice. Uh, pumpkin crepe primitives. I was very, very happy, very pleased with everything I got. Um, I know my sister ordered some linen from her. It was beautiful. Um, so I would definitely, those two shops were fantastic. I do have some other haul that I wanted to show that I ordered. And there's a reason between behind this. So I ordered some new smaller bags. I have Creative Carol's bags. So she is on Etsy. And I have several of her bigger bags. I actually keep my Prairie Schooler Santas in it because they're all kitted up, every single floss I would need. The patterns are in there. The copy of the patterns, my working copy are in there. Um, everything I need. So I can pick up one bag and all my Santas are in that bag. And I really, really like that. But it's a large bag. So I wanted some smaller bags for on the go projects and for these little projects. She put a pair of scissors in there because I ordered so many bags, which is so sweet. Um, what I really, really found out that I like, I took this on a trip. I love the handles. And I will tell you, it's a small detail on a bag, but when I was getting out of the car, out of the truck, and I was going, I could stick my hand in here and grab other stuff and my cross stitch was with me and I didn't have to hold it. So I really, really liked these. I actually want to get some of, I think this is the small size. I have the large size. I gifted my sister one of the medium size for her birthday. I would like to get myself some of the medium sizes. I really, really like these bags with the handles. They're just so handy when you're on the go. And we all know, well, most of us take a project on the go with us. This handle, I'm telling you, it's the bomb. So this is the um, snowman. I just ordered a variety of bags. This is a Halloween. Isn't that bag so pretty though? And I got a B bag, which my B projects are going to go into because I will be stitching bees for summer. A beautiful Christmas bag. a 4th of July bag, 
another Christmas barn bag, which I'm a sucker for. This little guy, look at these Santas. I love them and I love the check. Love that. And then this was so pretty too. So pretty. And then here's a St. Patty's Day bag. So those were some bags that I picked up. I would like to get some of the medium sized ones, but let me tell you that handle was so handy. And I don't know if I talked to you guys before, um, I went on a trip with my husband before he got sick. Thankfully it didn't happen when we were on the trip. Uh, we went to go pick up a truck that we bought out of Canada. And so the truck was coming in the United States through Buffalo. Um, we had to hire a company to bring the truck from, and it's a big truck, so construction truck. Um, we had to hire a company to bring it across the border. And of course there's tons of paperwork you have to do beforehand to bring a vehicle across the border. Um, we did all that. That company had to pick it up from the auction yard, bring it across the border and drop it in Buffalo at a friend's business that we know up there. We were like two hours behind them and we picked up our truck out of the parking lot and um, we hit snow. It was crazy. Um, like literally we got there and it had started snowing like maybe 15 minutes before we got there. Um, my husband, of course, we had to put the truck on a low boy, big, big truck. And he gets it on the truck, he chains it down. He goes inside um, to get a wiper because his wiper side was not working well and it, it's a truck supply place up there. So he went in to get a wiper. By the time he came out, he was chit-chatting because of course the guy graciously let us do this drop at his business. Um, he chit-chatted, I don't know, he was inside 45 minutes and he came out and there was like two inches on the ground. <laughs> So yeah, we stayed the night. The next morning we got up and the roads were clear. There was still snow, but the roads were clear. We skirted around that big snowstorm that had come in um, up there in the, in the Northeast. We kind of were on the, we were skirting the side of it. So we did get snow, but we didn't get what, we didn't get snowed in. Um, but yeah, we stayed in a beautiful um, hotel that's up there. Um, that's in Buffalo, and I'm trying to think of the name. It starts with Salvador's, Salvador's, something like that. Um, I can't remember exactly, but there's like a five-star restaurant in this place, um, and we ate there for dinner. I mean, it was beautiful. It was, it was fantastic. Um, and of course, you know, we have a big truck with a low boy trailer behind us <laughs> at a five-star resort because that's the way we roll, right? Um, I, I think it's a it's a several star resort. Um, it, very, very good ratings. The food was delicious. Um, that was so nice. The, the hotel room was beautiful. It was an older hotel, but very nicely kept. You could tell it's, it's not a chain. Um, the owner was actually at the restaurant the night before. Um, so we got to meet him. I mean, it's just cool. It, you know, it's just neat. It's not, your, you know, it wasn't your typical holiday inn. So there you go. Um, somebody did say, it's on my Instagram, and somebody did say that they have eaten at that restaurant before, and it was very good. I think people go there for like special occasions, but because it was snowing, and because it was like in the middle of the week, there was nobody there. Um, I think there might have been 10 cars in the parking lot, and I'm pretty sure some of those were workers. Um, I know that the gentleman that owns it, he lives in the hotel, which I think that is cool, so cool too, so... Anyhow, that's our little trip that we took up. We literally um, took three days. We stopped in West Virginia because we were getting snowed. Um, and then we stopped in Buffalo overnight as well and then came back down. So that is that. Um, that's all I have to show you. All my piles are done. Thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for being patient for this video. And thank you for coming back to watch me. Um, and don't forget, if you want to enter the giveaway, say uh, Easter in your comment. Um, I use random, random comment picker generator. That's a mouthful. Um, so you have to have that phrase or it doesn't pick it up. So you can say whatever you want to, but put that word Easter in there because it grabs it regardless of what you say. Um... And that is it. I'm going to be stitching, stitching, stitching. I'm going to be stitching spring and Easter up through March 1st. And then I'm going to be moving on 
to bees and Americana. Um, I have stepped to my goal. I have put things in my dough bowl, which that was my plan. I have so many big pieces I want to start. I want to work on some of my big pieces, but I'm really sticking with my dough bowl goal to try to get these little pieces and really enjoy them. And then next year I can pick up those other pieces. It's not a big deal. And I can work on those bigger pieces and then I can say, oh, it's spring. I want to add two more spring pieces or one more spring piece in this year but I've gotten the bulk done this year. So that's that's my goal this year. So I've been holding to it. 17 finishes so far this year. I don't know where I'll be at by the end of the year, but um, I'm having fun doing it regardless. So it's it's been fun. So thank you. Um, and I will talk to you again, hopefully in two weeks, but life happens. Thank you for being patient. Stay safe and happy stitching, my friends.